one of the few images that exist of a 1976 film directed by John Carpenter and starring Farrah Fawcett with an all-star cast and one of the most impressive production teams ever assembled. Featuring legendary talents from Star Wars, the original Alien, Marvel Comics, and The Howling. Had the film been released, it would be known today as a missing link of sci-fi and horror in the 70s and early 80s. So why have you never heard of this film? Let's discover the world of what would have been. Through the years, only scant whispers of the film have ever been uttered. Even the most ardent Carpenter fans have never heard of it. In fact, the only time it has really ever been talked about in public was from a 1984 interview with Michael Caine. Was there a film you regret not making? There was a Carpenter film in 1976. You were in a John Carpenter movie. I shouldn't have said that. I can't talk about that. It was only last year, while rummaging through a vault at Pinewood Studios, that documentarian and filmmaker Charles DeLazarica discovered what remained of the film. The prints themselves had been destroyed by age and neglect. But from what remained, a tapestry of an image could be assembled. In the spring of 1976, Alan Ladd Jr. had a problem. It was an open secret that Star Wars, a film that Ladd had greenlit, was having serious production issues. Over budget, an unhappy crew, and a director who was having mental breakdowns. Ladd was growing concerned that Star Wars would either flop, or worse, not even deliver. So he hatched a plan. Diverting a not insignificant amount of the Star Wars post-production budget, Land began developing another production by using marquee actors to draw on audiences. On his desk was the script for The Inhuman by Dan O'Bannon, early draft of what would become the Alien script. Ladd loved the idea and saw it as the perfect drive-in movie. But it was a delicate matter as O'Bannon was working on a special effects shot for Star Wars and Ladd couldn't have his backup film getting back to Lucas. Ladd met with O'Bannon, swearing him to secrecy and having him sign a non-disclosure agreement. For a director, Ladd scouted O'Bannon's collaborator for Dark Star, John Carpenter. After two independent films, Carpenter was eager for a studio film and jumped in the prospect, despite his somewhat contentious relationship with O'Bannon. The script for The Inhuman is a curious one, containing elements of O'Bannon's unfinished screenplay memory, parts of Alien, and some possible coincidences to elements that would appear in films later in the Alien series. Through a hurried pre-production process, and as sets were being built, a newcomer designer by the name of Sid Mead was hired to design the film ship, the Montero. It's interesting to note that Mead's designs for this film would echo his later work on the Sulaco in Aliens. At Carpenter's insistence, Marvel Comics' Jack Kirby was brought on to design the film's creatures. This would be Kirby's first foray into films, opening the door for his later work on Argo. The film opens much like the original Alien, with the crew of the Montero coming out of hypersleep. It is here that we meet the cast. Farrah Fawcett was brought on for the lead role, Executive Officer Roby. Fawcett's run on Charlie's Angels had just begun, but everyone knew she was on the brink of Super Sardo. Rounding out the Montero crew would be Christopher Reeve as Captain Standard, who is, in essence, a younger version of the character Dallas in Alien. David Carradine as Communication Officer Kane. Michael Kane as Science Officer Wayland, perhaps an early concept seed of Wayland yutani Willem Dafoe as Security Officer Hicks. Once again, it is unclear if this is coincidental to the character Michael Bean would later play. Jamie Lee Curtis as Navigator Lambert. And finally, Morgan Freeman as Engineer Parker. The script has a crew responding to a distress signal on the planet Capula and discovering a derelict spacecraft. But unlike Alien, there is no immediate contact and the crew does not return to their ship. Instead, Captain Standard orders the crew to search the alien ship for signs of life or material to salvage. And a slow burn of tension begins to permeate the film. As audiences, we know something is out there. Through the first act, we discover the crew often bickers with one another but it's clear that they are a tight-knit crew. It very much echoes the dynamic that Carpenter would later develop in The Thing. But as we round it to the second act, the crew begins to notice that collectively, their memories are beginning to fade. It's Kane who first notices. Small details like forgetting Roby's first name, which amusingly, we never find out. The only one who seems immune to this amnesia is Wayland, who dutifully reminds the crew of things they keep forgetting. Eventually, paranoia begins to settle in, 
as the crew discover their landing craft has been sabotaged. As night falls on the planet, the creatures arrive, and the film enters a roller coaster ride of thrills and scares. The creatures would be Carpenter's first foray into Lovecraftian horror, and it was a stellar introduction, as the final designs were created by none other than Rick Baker. The crew members are picked off one by one as they continue to lose more of their memories. Of particular note is Willem Dafoe's Hicks, who becomes practically feral and attempts to join the alien horde. By the end, we are left only with Wayland and Roby, as Wayland reveals himself to be a synthetic, much like Ash or Bishop, and thus immune to the memory-wiping side effects of the planet. He admits that the crew were sent down as guinea pigs, and it was he who disabled the landing craft. As Roby succumbs to madness, her final words are, you're inhuman, you're inhuman, revealing the titular character of the film was amongst us the whole time. While there is no doubt the Inhuman would be considered a landmark film today, it never completed filming. Roughly three quarters of the way through, the plug was pulled. It remains unclear as to why, and no documentation refers to any reason. What we do know is that Ladd had all production members sign off on a non-disclosure agreement about the film, forbidding them to speak about it publicly. After the success of Star Wars, Fox began hunting for a new sci-fi film for their slate. Ironically, that film was Alien, based, at least in part, on a movie they had already secretly made. While the Inhuman met the same fate as the crew of the Montero, its memory forgotten. Hi everyone, thanks for watching what I believe to be is the first documentary about a fake film using imagery wholly composed by AI. It's a weird flex, I know. Anyhow, I'll be doing a why how follow up on this fairly shortly, plus a lot more stuff like this. So if you're interested, please hit the like and subscribe. And I'd really love to know what you guys thought of the whole project. So please drop a comment below. And finally, if you are John Carpenter or anyone that are represented in this film and you want to punch me in the face, just reach out. Be happy to oblige. Maybe you can meet up with the old Applebee's, grab some cheese fries after. All right, we'll see you next time.